My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Kahn on Twitter or at JeffreyCahn.com. My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas. Today, I'm welcoming a guest, a friend of mine and a guest to the podcast, Cameron Barrett. Cam, welcome to Digital Oil & Gas. Thanks, Jeffrey. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, now, you and I have known each other for... I want to say uh, it's many years now, probably a decade. So, but uh, let's just go back in time uh, to, to your first career. Wh- where I met you was with um, SAP, I think, back in the day. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. It has been a decade, Jeffrey. And you know, both of us are a little, <laughs> little older, a little more mature. Wisdom, I think, is the the word that comes to mind. But uh, in all in all seriousness, yeah, you know, I've had a, a technology career here in Western Canada uh, that uh, involved a. Uh, SAP, as you mentioned previously, uh, SAS, the analytics company, and oh, then yeah. uh, uh, Computer Sciences Corporation. I uh, had the pleasure of uh, leading the country for them for for a few years. So yeah, it's been a been a really uh, interesting uh, decade since you and I have met, and twenty years in my career. Yeah, if I remember correctly, you're a lawyer. Is that right? Well, I, I have. Uh, I have a, a law degree, uh, but uh, not a current. <laughs> but you're not practicing lawyer. a lawyer. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Now, tell me a little bit about uh, FieldSafe. I know that you joined the company just, uh, you know, if, uh, well, it was a couple of years ago now. So, what's what's the what's the backstory to, to FieldSafe? Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those great Alberta founder stories. Is is really what it is. We have two founders, Al Bradley and Paul Aberley, and uh, those gentlemen had some some challenges with their own personal safety in the field. And uh, came back one day and said, "There, there has to be a better way." So, what, what, tell me a little bit about the like the safety issue. What is the issue that that they saw that yeah. that would be so compelling that they said we have to drop what we're doing and go fix it? Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a story that uh, uh, certainly I've I've shared with Al many times. He was a uh, working as a land agent, and yeah, so there were there had been several um, motions and 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 ultimately a decision that. Uh, uh, the farmer had to leave his his, his land, and and uh, there was going to be a road built through that through that area. Oh, so it's eminent domain kind of thing Correct. for uh, for for access purposes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the farmer uh, got violent with them, and uh, you know Al didn't have a way to to reach out in a in a timely fashion to uh, alert the authorities, and uh, uh, he got away that day, but came back and said he'd never go back without without something to protect himself. Uh, and uh, you know, I saw this phenomenon when I was in Australia. There was a story of a um, a nurse who was part of the sort of the, the drive around nursing force that would visit uh, communities remote from hospital services and doctor services. Uh, she was uh, kidnapped and uh, murdered, and um, the uh, health authority was able knew that the ve- the vehicle was stolen, and uh, the health authority was able to see the vehicle driving around rural Australia, but they had no idea where the nurse was. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it created a real crisis uh, of thinking. Well, how, how how is it that we can be we can know where the equipment is, but we can't safeguard the humans driving the equipment? It sounds like a very similar kind of uh, phenomenon that that uh, the founders uh, wrestled with. Yeah, it's a really sad story that you share, and, and yes, it's exactly the uh, the type of type of challenge that, that we see all the time. So, what's the obligation then of an employer? who has a workforce who are out in the field, uh, do they have a duty of care under either moral or legal grounds in, you know, I know in Australia there was a legal responsibility. I just don't know the rules here in Alberta. Yeah, Bill C-30, which was passed uh, last last summer of 2018, uh, is clear about the reasonable care that a uh, an employer must take for, for their employees. And, uh, um, you know, we certainly uh, advanced that to a to a standard that's uh, um, best in class. So, what does that mean? Uh, just, so just sort of dig into duty of care. Um, so, so let's say I'm a service company. I'm under contract to a uh, oil and gas concern, uh, and the requirement is for an a individual or team of individuals to head out to an asset for inspection services. When when does the obligation for the the operator or the the field service company start? Yeah. Is it is it from the time that the employee leaves home, or is it from the time they leave the shed, or how how does what is the what is the what is the duty of care? Yeah, yeah, it, it's still unclear. Is 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 the real answer, Jeffrey? You know the uh, workers that are that are entering hazardous or high risk areas, 
uh, workers that are working alone. Mm. Uh, th those are uh, the main uh, concern of the legislation. Mm. Uh, they're less concerned about workers that are working in groups um, and, and in teams. Uh, because they're, they're looking after each other, raise right. the alarm if something goes wrong, and yeah. so forth. Yeah. yeah. So it's not just. I mean, in the Australia story I've related, it's, it was a it was a kidnapping and violent incident. But mm -hmm. you know, in Alberta, we don't have as many of that that sort of thing going on. So what thankfully. are the kinds? Thankfully, yes. What are the kinds of incidences that that uh, you know employees face out there that that you know, is is the sort of thing that uh, operators and field companies should be concerned about? Yeah. So so folks that are going on long journeys. Uh, down uh, roads that may be less, uh, less well-traveled than others. Oh, logging roads and, and the like, yeah, you lots bet. of those. Yeah. You bet. Uh, folks that are doing hazardous or, or dangerous tasks, whether it's, it's climbing a pole, uh, those, types of, those types of activities. Mm. And, you know, really as we look at the assets that we have as an organization, just general, general care of your, of your people. Mm. So it's not just driving around, it's actually on site and doing things and so forth, yeah. That's correct. And so... You know, in my mind's in my mind's eye. I'm thinking, uh, you know, the the employee who, uh, you know, injures themselves. It, it, but they're working by themselves, and they they're injured. They trip. They fall, and 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 suddenly they're prone and and uh, you know, distant from the truck, and they can't raise the alarm, if you like. So that's one kind of problem. There's the kidnapping kind of problem. Yeah. What other kinds of problems do people encounter in the field? Yeah, so we, we see uh, instances of uh, of heart attack. Oh, no kidding! Right. So of course, yeah, you'd have health. Health issues. So, uh, so just even detecting that sort of thing is is a is that the re employer's responsibility, or do they have a responsibility to help respond? Yeah, it's more of a reasonable care. What would a reasonable employer uh, do for their for their for assets their employees, for, yeah, the, for, their, for, their for their people? Uh, okay, so there's not a, a strict obligation that says if A then B. It is what is the moral responsibility really? Right. right. Okay. So, so well-run, well-meaning companies, well looked after, are going to, I think, subscribe to a high duty of care for their for their people. They'll demonstrate real care. Well, they absolutely will, and, and their customers are, are demanding that. Uh, the the service organizations working for for the largest organizations in in North America, yeah. uh, they're they're being asked to provide that that high high level of care because they're on they're on a client site. Um, yeah, and there's usually two or three fatalities a year on you know these big. Big, big industrial sites all around the world. Unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Way, way too many. But, but yeah. yes, it's true. So, so the big, the big, big companies are insisting that their supply chain uh, take responsibility and care for their their employees. Absolutely. Yeah. Anywhere in the world, I presume. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So this isn't a phenomenon of oh, it's just here in Alberta. If I'm if I'm sending my people to Indonesia or something for a mining project, right? Same same phenomenon. Exactly right. So it's worldwide, not just local correct yeah what makes this hard problem to solve yeah so this the status quo is really the the, the best answer that I, I can give you Jeffrey mm. you know today if you're uh, leaving Edmonton and heading out up to Lloyd Minister and you text your buddy that you're leaving and when you get to Lloyd Minister you text your wife that you've arrived everybody says well we, we've got that we've covered. checked in yeah, yeah. we've checked in yeah. and, and, and the reality is is that during that drive of several hours, we would have no idea uh, where you were, what happened to you during those the, the, those time frames. Uh, similarly, uh, you know, during an eight to ten hour workday, uh, folks can folks can cover you know on ground several miles and, and by vehicle mm. you know many multiples of that. Mm. And uh, you know how do, how are we using technology uh, that's available to us today to to do everything we can to keep our people safe? And what, what kind of technologies are out there that you know are are underexploited in your you know, as you would see it? Yeah. So I mean, I've I mean, got I'm, I'm carrying a smartphone and a and a, I've got an Apple Watch on today. It's yeah. it's, it's, it's got a, it actually can give me my heartbeat and can detect noise levels and all sorts of fun things. Well, now you're into the next the, the next wave of our platform for sure. But but today, j simple GPS tracking. You know, yeah, everybody carries a device uh, mm -hmm. that can be monitored by. Um, uh, you know, other folks um, at either home office locations or, or centralized locations in, in the province um, to, to understand the safety and whereabouts of, of their greatest asset, which is their people. Yeah. I know that uh, in, in Australia, one of the services that was, uh, that was available was a call center model. So mm -hmm. the employee, how it would work there is the employee would 
be ob the, the requirement was they would check in by calling this call center. And the problem with that was that employees would forget to check in or their phone was, you know, not, not uh, able to connect to the call center, which is potentially, you know, in another state and quite distant. Um, and it certainly didn't take advantage of any sort of mobility apps that were available on the phone. So it was kind of a, it was a, and it, and it was expensive because every time somebody has to pick up a phone and, and take a note, right, you're, it was 7 or $8 a phone call or something. So it was never used. It was just unappealing. Yeah, and that's exactly right. You're making it difficult for the field worker who has all sorts of competing priorities yeah. uh, to pick up the phone and, and call into a contact center, which is costly yeah. for certain, um, instead of enabling the technology uh, that they have right in their hand uh, at that time. And um, organizations have determined there's a better way to do that. Mm. Um, and then you know have that ability to, to drive audit and compliance and risk data mm. uh, into their... Uh, into their enterprise, uh, as opposed to being reliant on, you know, technology that really existed in 1982, which was which was a <laughs> telephone. Pick up telephone, right, yeah, right. yeah. You get payphone in in many respects, yeah. So so the benefit to uh, if you, if you can if you so aside from the moral responsibility for duty of care, mm -hmm. the the uh, value uh, uh, to the employee is um, their personal safety and well-being. So if they fall ill or they're in an accident. Uh, help can be on the way because you know exactly where they are. Right? So there's the there's the story for the employees. Correct. And the, uh, the the employer gets a, 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 a obviously a, a able to fulfill that responsibility. I assume it's better for attracting talent. Do, do people actually? I mean, I would assume if you if you knew that comp company A was far safer and took a higher d duty of care, you'd be a more attractive employer. Well, you absolutely would be, not only to the employee, but to the organizations that you wish to serve. Mm. Uh, all, all of that supply chain that you spoke to. What about previously. insurance costs? Do you actually is there an insurance element lurking in all of this? Yeah, there certainly is. So, uh, as we collect more and more data, yeah. uh, the value of that data to WCB insurance companies becomes incredibly valuable in terms of um, trending um, and, and insights into uh, what's really taking place. Uh, with a given organization. Okay, so what I, I think what, what I hear you saying is, as as you are, as as the, as people are the, uh, using a service that that allows the, the visibility to physically where they are, you can use that data to make a, a case for a lower insurance premium or, or or whatnot, because you've got data to back up your position that says, well, actually, my people aren't in harm's way, and I've got fast response time and so forth. That's correct, and then by using trend analysis, we can show year over year or our year versus best in class, and and, and start to uh, start to drive those uh, those conversations. Yeah, who's most interested in this problem? Is it is it op owner operators who are commissioning the work? Is it service companies that are doing the services to the field? Is it the employees who are saying, "Where's my"? You, you don't care about me because you're not, you right. know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not able to correspond with you in real time. What's, what's driving it? Yeah, or it's, maybe, it's, maybe it's just a younger employment, younger employees who are more switched on with these technologies will be asking, them, where, where, where are you using this? Sure. So, so you know, certainly age demographic plays a, plays a, plays a factor. Yeah. Uh, when, when younger employees have access to technology, they'd, they'd like to use it for, for good. Mm. And in this case, their good and their well-being. Yeah. But, it, but, you know, it, it's really the boards, right? The HSE committees at the organizations uh, who have a direct duty to ensure uh, that their, their organizations are doing everything they can for the safety of their employees. Mm. And, and they're challenging management uh, to find better ways uh, and to do so, uh, you know, a, a more effective way um, with a, an improved cost structure, mm. um, you know, becomes very appealing to to many, many large companies. Yeah, especially in these, you know, the, we're, we've got our headwinds here in Alberta uh, with, with commodity markets being what they are, takeaway capacity constraints and so forth. So yeah. anything that the, indus the industry can do to improve its cost profile at the same time as improving its safety profile can't be a bad thing. Correct. We, yeah. uh, we, yeah. we, we found that. We found that for sure. As you kind of roll something like this out, t talk to me a little bit about the kinds of challenges that you see. Uh, like I, I, I can imagine, like inertia is one problem, so you got to deal with that. But you know, surely there would be other kinds of deployment issues or challenges. What, what have you seen that kind of blocks uptake here? 
Yeah, so, so absolutely. So just a, a good time to mention, um, Jeffrey, you know, our, our platform not only keeps the worker safe, but also allows the worker to complete all the paperwork that they previously did on a clipboard with a pen. Oh, no way. In, so, in, a, in a digital format. All right, so it delivers a forms data capture capacity right to the phone or the tablet or whatever they're working with. That's correct, okay. that's correct. Right, right, right. So when you combine those two areas, now you can really start to see what the challenges might be. Mm. So you might have a worker who's always done something a certain way. They've always filled out something on a clipboard. Mm. And um, it's great that they're, they're doing that, but, but they're not doing enough of it. And that data doesn't get back to home office in real time in a structured, accurate, and timely fashion. But it's also handwritten, right? So no, there's no drop-down boxes on a paper form. <laughs> there, 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 right? there are no so, drop-down so boxes. So the data quality is not going to be there. Imagine data. if you could actually improve the data quality, get it consistent, so forth. Yeah, that would be great. Prize there. So, so we can all agree that that would be better. So yeah. the challenges that we run into are really around the change management process that an organization needs to undertake to, to effectively drive uh, an improved safety culture. And that starts at the top. Yeah. Right? Leadership. So, yeah. So when leadership says, here's what we're doing and here's why we're doing it and here's what's in it for you, and they really mean it, then, then we see a, a tremendous uptick. Um, if, it's, if it's kind of a middle management fun project, um, you know, the results are, are quite predictable. More, more mixed and not, not, as, not as embraced. Correct. Yeah. Um, and so the, uh, the uh, potential for this... Um, can't be just oil and gas, because there's lots of distributed assets out there. You're right. So Who else have you seen that's taken an interest in this? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. So all of the organizations that would service the energy sector uh, are, are obvious. But yeah. then you get into the telecommunication sector. Oh, yeah. Lots of wires. Lots of wires. Lots of, wires. Lots of gentlemen and, and ladies climbing poles uh, out oh, where your, yeah. your satellite, uh, sorry, your um, cellular towers are. Yeah. Um, you know, we've had great interest from the healthcare community with all oh, the back remote, to my nurses, back my to your nurse nursing example, yeah, exactly, conversation yeah. and, and all of the remote uh, in-home nursing uh, conversations uh, that are taking place. So, yeah, we certainly don't don't feel limited uh, by the energy sector. That said, we're proud to be a, a Calgary-based company and, and uh, believe we have tremendous opportunity right here in Alberta. Yeah, yeah but I can definitely see an upside uh, bigger and broader, especially you can sort of think about a more global, a more global, uh, um, interest in this as, as, we, as we go on more and more industries and companies taking a greater a greater interest in in, in, in the um, possibilities that this this presents Correct. if someone wanted to learn more about field safe like wh where would they go how do they uh, is, what's your what's your website yeah you bet thanks Jeffrey it's www.fieldsafesolutions with an s fieldsafesolutions.com dot com based here in Calgary based here in Calgary and working around the world working around the world my friend <laughs> appreciate everything that you do and and uh, your your involvement with us it's it's been tremendous and uh, it's great well thanks so much this has been a uh, another episode of uh, digital oil and gas I've uh, been joined today by uh, Cam Barrett who's the CEO of Fieldsafe and uh, check in next week for another episode thanks very much thanks again Cam my pleasure Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And please tell a friend about the show. If you have a minute, please leave a review and a rating on iTunes, as that helps others find the show along with other great content. You can follow Jeffrey on Twitter, at Jeffrey Can, or on LinkedIn. Also, look for Jeffrey's new book, entitled Bits, Bites, and Barrels, The Digital Transformation of Oil and Gas on Amazon and other fine online bookshops. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.